Okay. So I've been thinking about making myself an epic chess set for a while. I found uh, some designs on Thingiverse that I really like. And I figured why not start the set with the E10 to see how it'll print the pieces. So we've got four pieces printed so far. Here's how they look. So let's take some close ups. They're a fair size. Just to give you an idea, this guy here I think is around 235 millimeter tall. He's my uh, bishop. Here's my knight. He is 220 millimeter tall. Let's take a close up look here. Some of the details. I'll go over my print settings here in a minute. This white is very hard to focus on. I find it, it does horrible in viewing in uh, bright light situations too. Here is a pawn. They're not flawless by any means, but the they're they turned out pretty good. Here is a rook. This guy took just over four hours, four and a half hours to print. This one took me almost nine hours, eight and three quarter hours to print him. Long ways to go. We need, I need two of each of these for white, two of each of these for black. Still got the queen and the king. But that's what we have all these other printers for. They can all print at the same time. But I thought I would uh, start this set out on the ANET E10 just to see if we could get some good print quality on this printer. I know a lot of users out there ordered it already and they've seen a lot of videos, of review videos, negative review videos on the printer and uh, they're a little worried. So I thought I would uh, jump in and do as many prints as I can over the last two days uh, to see what kind of print quality I get and uh, share it with everyone so we do have a you know a few little here and there a little weird zits if I can focus on that hard to focus on this white but that's it like we have a couple of little weird things but Overall, the prints are really good. There's no issues that a little bit of cleanup after the print is finished uh, won't take care of. But there's lots of detail in these, as you can see. And they're really, they're only supposed to be about that big, so I really up the size on these. I am happy with how they turned out. I hope this video eases the stress of anybody that's purchased this print and it's already it's on its way after seeing all the initial review videos that you can get good prints out of it and that goes for most any 3d printer kit otherwise it's all user user ability and um, I didn't do a whole lot to the printer to, like as you can see up here I had to tape off the bottom of the fan because it has a hard time keeping up the temperature because of the type of heat sink we have in there that fan is uh, and uh, the size of that fan, the bottom part of that fan is blowing right on the heater block. So, uh, if you notice a little bit of your filament cooling, so you're 
you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't because let me get in here so if I lower this and I'm not cooling it as much here I'm now cooling it 100% with this shroud and if I raise it so I'm not cooling with this shroud and I'm cooling the filament I'm cooling the whole thing with this fan so you gotta find a happy middle there and for now I found my happy middle and I just put some tape up here to uh, make sure everything stayed up to temperature and that seemed to work fine for me for now just a quick fix uh, the Mount Rushmore of Egypt right there um, smaller one here has a few little artifacts on the face but those can be easily cleaned up but overall the bigger guy here I found his face um, came out a little rougher than everyone else's you can see the lines a lot easier there than every other face here but I'm still pretty happy with how they came out they'll clean up nice and okay so let's get on to the the settings so uh, in Cura I 0.2 millimeter layer height I have 8% uh, infill and I have a 0 0.5 millimeter nozzle on there I just I, I went through two or three 4.4 millimeter nozzles and I was just getting a lot of skipping I didn't feel like opening up the box and playing around with the, the voltage to the stepper so I figured hey why not let's try a 0.5 millimeter nozzle on there and then in Cure I changed my settings so that it reflects what I changed here to a 0.5 millimeter nozzle and I had no issues with the extruder skipping at all I had no under extrusion no over extrusion so it worked out fine for me I have lots of 0.5 millimeter nozzles so I have two or three printers running with them and uh, I have no issues with it um, at 0.1 millimeter layer height I could have probably got a lot more detail but they would have taken twice as long and I wanted to get something uh, out as fast as I could for uh, you viewers who have already purchased this printer and are waiting on it to arrive um, I hope this eases your conscience a little bit uh, in regards to this printer coming and this uh, the detail it, the details in all these models uh, uh, I'm pretty satisfied with this is just two days after I got the printer uh, after I uploaded the review I got some started getting some feedback from people I really wasn't interested in uh, doing any modifications for this printer at all but then I got a lot of feedback from people saying they've got the printer on the way and they're worried now about the printer and what kind of support they'll have so I decided I changed my mind and we'll do some prints and we'll see what modifications we can do for this printer to help improve it and uh, share that with the community so if one of you guys out there is willing to um, either get the uh, ANET uh, group on Facebook to start supporting this printer or start a support group of your own, that also might be helpful. Okay, so here's the shroud that I came up with. It mounts, you use the two screws that hold the bracket for the uh, Y axis stepper motor in place to hold it in place. It holds it pretty good and this is the bracket I came up with that connects to here it's, it's pretty simple uh, it's got a little clip end on it and it goes over and it just snaps in place see like that so as I said it just snaps in place like that it's not meant to hold your your cable in place it's just meant to uh, stay fixed fixed in this position over this this now okay. now if you're going to want to hook up a cable here like let me grab a length that I've already got put together if you're going to want to hook something like this up here like that you're going to need to go into your box 
you're going to need to go into your control box here and you're going to need to disconnect the wires for the bit so that's user choice there if you want to hook this up and if you do want to do this keep in mind I'm just going to set it there for a moment I'm not going to snap it in place it's going to come out to about here let's see here so it's going to come out to about here when the, the bed is in the home position. So if you have space behind your bed uh, to accommodate that, then great. Otherwise, I'm really not sure, like uh, at the moment anyways, with the little bit of time that I've had this printer, uh, a better way to put a cable chain here. There's no mounting points on here to hold something like this. So even if I did extend it under the bed, it's, it still wouldn't serve a purpose to hold anything in place. It does snap fit. So, um, what you're going to do is you're going to take this connector. It's going to go in here like so. And it does snap fit in place. And then you're going to make sure it's all the way to the bottom. And then you're going to take it and you're going to connect it. like such there so as you can see here um, these heat shrink tubings are way too big for the wiring that's on them and I have already I have the uh, the wrap the mesh here coming out so I got a zip tie here holding this one on it's pretty ugly uh, and I eventually foresee that having to all of them because it is pretty loose because this heat shrink tubing is, is far too big. They should have gone a couple sizes smaller on it. Maybe applied a little bit more heat than they did. Maybe they rushed it. I'm not sure. But it's really too big and uh, the wrap is coming out of it. And it already came out here due to the four prints that I recently did. Um, I might be rushing this video a little bit just for the fact that... Uh, a lot of negative reviews uh, hit YouTube pretty quick uh, about this printer, and mine included. Uh, I wish I could say different, but it's hard to do that when you get a printer with so many QC issues and at a price point that you shouldn't expect those. Um, I do have, since the review, I added a 0.05 millimeter nozzle here for the printer. I really like 0.05. It's my favorite nozzle size. Uh, four of my nine printers have a 0.5. The rest have 0.4. So, uh, but when I added the 0.5 mil nozzle, I had no more skipping on the extruder, and uh, all the prints I did since I did that, and I did four prints, and the the shortest one was about four and a half hours and the longest one was close to nine hours eight and three quarter hours I believe and they all turned out great so I had no issues with under extrusion or anything like that they all turned out great I'll uh, do some close-ups of those I have some time lapses of those for the video just to show that they were printed on this printer but they did all turn out good so if you're somebody that purchased this printer already if you didn't wait for the reviews and you you purchased this printer already you have it coming in um, and you're worried now that you might get a lemon, you might get something that's incapable of printing good quality prints. Fear not, it is capable of printing good quality prints. It just requires a little bit more TLC than it should. Um, and uh, I'll show you that here with the prints that I got off the printer. Uh, but for the moment, I just wanted to uh, take a look at this. So this is the design I came up with so far. It's got the built-in uh, connector for your your cable chain links. They'll just snap right in there. This is my prototype. Uh, it's a little rough looking, but uh, the finished one is a lot better. Same with this. This is the prototype as well. So I always print out uh, my designs and try them out before I post them. Um, when uh, when I do finish this, it will be up on Thingiverse, available for anybody to download. 
as again if you want to hook up a cable chain to this you can you're going to need a, some distance behind the printer it will protect the cable from going into here but i think with the shroud here right now you might be a little better off than before so and if you're not going to put the cable chain on you don't necessarily need this uh printed piece here um, again you don't have to print either one but I found that uh, I didn't like the fact that I axis motor some of the way it was I didn't like um, the uh, pulley and everything so uh, close to my cables here and I you still have to I still have to figure out how I'm going to manage these uh, I might if I get time design something for the uh, x-axis where you can hook a cable chain up to there I think uh, one of the designs for the a8 has a bracket that already goes where the motor mount is that might suit this printer fine I'll just have to come up with something that mounts over where the the, uh, the hot end shroud is to connect the cable chain and that way we have our cable safely secure there too and not dangling around everywhere so let's go take a look at those time lapses uh, we'll just briefly run through them because this video isn't about time lapse prints. I'm crawling under the city of so I have one successful print off the printer so far. I'm hoping for number two here. The bed is leveled uh, pretty good. As you can see, we've got two layers. Our first layer is already down, and our second layer is being applied now. And the first layer went down flawlessly. So everything looks like it's going to turn out well here. This print, this print is a, a six hour print so it'll be a little while before I really know anything. I just uh, I thought I would uh, illustrate the sound levels of this printer even with uh, linear bearings and the smooth rods for the bed. It's pretty quiet overall printing wise however the box is uh, fairly noisy. I would actually put it a little higher than the CR10 uh, and the acrylic uh, box for the X3 on noise levels there's those two tiny fans in there just spinning at 100% and they're they're pretty loud uh, they drown out the rest of the printer itself So, again, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was informative. Um, any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. And when you get your printer, good luck with it. I hope you didn't. I hope you don't get the QC issues that I got. Thanks for watching.